so first of all thank you technopark congratulations to you on this uh, this is uh, extraordinary uh, event uh, in the journey of this institute and ensuring that industry and academia meet somewhere and produce uh, interesting uh, results so thank you for that and congratulations uh, so before we start uh, this is the introduction about company loris last year we did close to 720 million in revenues uh, we in the country we might be third or fourth largest in terms of the reactor volume capacity so we have close to 8 million liter reactor volume and what it does is it helps us produce uh, medicines at scale uh, we are into active pharmaceutical ingredient api not the computer api but the actual pharma products we also do finished dosage we also have a cdmo uh, division where we service lot of global pharmaceutical companies and recently we've started the bio uh, side of thing we we have a formulation capacity of close to 4500 plus employees we also have a big research center in hyderabad and hence we have 330 plus uh, patents now so this is about loris you know it's a small molecule vertically integrated pharmaceutical company and how did we come up to biotechnology and how did we landed up in iit so small exercise uh, what we did some time back maybe 3 and a half 4 years back was we looked at the indian pharmaceutical ecosystem and we said we we are good at scale we are good at manufacturing uh, but we are predominantly playing a catch up game and we as company loras and also as indian pharmaceutical ecosystem have always played a catch up game right we are great at generics we have never launched a new product in the market uh, be it product i mean there are some medical device examples but we have not done something uh, which which is very innovative we never first in the world uh, for anything and we said is there a way we can solve that uh, is there a way we can be disruptive uh, in the market and not just disruptive for the sake of disruptive but what we thought we should do is invest in an area which actually enhances the standard of care uh, for indian population and population of this subcontinent uh, can we bring novel therapies to market so that was the question uh, we started with how do we bring novel therapies to market how do we disrupt the market uh knowing fully well what our capabilities are right we are a small molecule company uh so first thing which we did was we said this one of the ways we can achieve this is first allocating 10% of our profits uh, we'll not ask any questions 10% uh, of our profits will invest in a disruptive technology right we will not look at an incremental innovation to what we are doing it would have also we would have thought okay we do cap tablets and capsules we can do injectable we can do sachet we can do films or in api can we look at api plus some different activity we said no none of that we will do we will actually go to a completely disruptive area and invest 10% of our profits and no excel sheets no business case we'll we'll just take that hit uh, so that was one uh, idea we thought we should use and good part our board approved our obviously ceo and cfo were very supportive of this and board also approved this and that time 3 3 and a half years back that number translated close to a 70 200 crore number so we had that and we said okay how should we do it should we make or should we buy right uh, industry has this weird habit of doing trying to do everything in house right they we have research center we'll try to do everything in house and that was one big departure we took we said there are a lot of interesting concepts not just in the pharmaceutical space but also in the medical device in diagnosis uh, in healthcare delivery a uh, lot of areas to actually focus on uh, radio contrast agents the delivery of them producing lot of area cell and gene therapy lot of areas and we can't be expert in everything i think let's understand that first and it is important that once you understand let's go and partner with people and we said we should partner with startups and one so what was clear at this point 10% we'll invest where we will invest was not clear how we will invest was not clear but where we will invest we said okay we will evaluate multiple opportunities but how we will invest started becoming clear because we knew we have to 
partner with either startups or academic institutes and we were talking to some friends in the industry people who support industry one of the investment bankers came we were toying this idea he said hey you know what iit bombay is has a startup they are looking for investment which is in this kind of range why don't you look at them and then they introduced us uh, to them and that is how uh, our journey uh, with academia began so we made our first investment in iit bombay startup this is a car t they do uh, car t for blood cancers uh, immuno act is the name of the startup when we invested in them they have a very small laboratory in iit uh, the bsb department they had treated one or two patients at tata memorial we invested in them uh, and then we helped them set up the manufacturing facility we helped them conduct clinical trials get approval and happy to share that last year in october we actually had the first car t product approved uh, in india and car t globally uh, was in us and europe for last 5 years but none of these innovators will come to india with their product a the price tag is very high for a car t therapy the average price tag in the us is around 4 or 5 crore uh, what we have launched is at between 30 to 40 lakhs that's like a 10 times uh, lower and we were able to do that only because we partnered with academia and help them bridge the gap uh, academics are good in basic research corporates are good in scale up commercialization the regulatory aspects Com corporate is good in that and we kind of married the two and we were able to get this product approved and also happy to share that this is not just a follow on product this is first in the world uh, which is a humanized car. So all the globally available products, uh, there are products from Novartis, BMS, Gilead, they're all murine car products. And hence, uh, their side effect profile is very different. So they render more side effects while ours is humanized car. And we have, we as a result of humanized car, we give slightly higher dose, but our side effect profile is way lower, uh, be it in terms of cytokine release syndrome or other neurotoxicity. This was actually an experiment uh, which we did. Uh, and then, by the way, we reinvested in the company uh, at a significantly higher valuation. So initially, we had close to 26% stake. Now we have 35-36% stake, uh, Loris has. And Loris Plus employees have close to 40% stake in MNO Act. That was a great example, which actually gave us the confidence uh, that this can be done. Uh, you know, there is this innovative model through which you can partner and bring novel therapies to market and also taught us a couple of other things when we launched this product and by the way this product was dedicated to nation by the president uh, two weeks back uh, in iit bombay some of us were present there uh, thank you and this also taught us a lot of things uh, first thing when we launched and uh, this news became that we, you know, IIT Bombay and Loris and Tia Tata Memorial have this product, a lot of countries started to approach us. And uh, one of the countries, Mexico, we have signed an agreement uh, with them where we will use our car and do treat, treat some patients in Mexico and also this therapy will then be available in Mexico. Plus a lot of other countries uh, actually requested. And what that tells us is this kind of therapy is are not just required in India, uh, but in the entire, uh, and the way, if you see and if you divide the world into a global north and a global south, right, 20 to 25 percent of the population reside in the global north, right, the blue region on top, while bulk of the population actually lives in the global south. And global north, because those are more affluent countries, they get access to all latest therapies, all latest technologies, and the Global South doesn't get that, while bulk of the population lives in Global South. And Global South, unless and until you find someone local uh, to address these problems, and the markets are very different, right? And uh, so, so we will have to find innovative solutions uh, through these partnerships. And that was one thing we said, unless and until someone from Global South comes, uh, you can't really solve this. And that was one thing we wanted to do. The other thing, if you see, is the rare diseases, right? So there are a lot of therapies in the US and Europe which are approved for various rare diseases which are not approved in India. 
innovators don't come because of the pricing issues, access issues, lot of things, regulatory issues. Uh, and rare diseases are actually not rare in India in an absolute term. Uh, look at diseases like Duchenne muscular dystrophy or LCA for which we are developing gene therapy. Big numbers, right? So, and these global companies will not come. So, the other thing is the Indian healthcare system is very heterogeneous. So, you have pockets of excellence uh, in some centers. A lot of us don't get access to that, right? Go to a tier 3, tier 2 cities. Not just there are no, no patients. There are a lot of patients, but they don't have access. So, it's a very heterogeneous system. And you will have to provide a novel way to deliver medicines there. Not just identifying medicines, but also the commercialization aspect of go-to-market. How do you really reach out to market? There are no cold storage facilities. There are no good healthcare providers. There are no good administration facilities. And, and that is the problem we are trying to solve through these academic collaborations. This is our relationship with IIT Kanpur. So we have uh, an IP in licensing agreement. We have an R&D grant, which we are giving. And we are also building a CGMP facility here in Technopark. I think the first two blocks uh, are a no-brainer. Uh, recently, you know, if you have to have a therapy, you have to in license the IP. So these two blocks were not brainer. We spent a lot of time in CGMP facility. Uh, should we put up? Our initial idea was, okay, we take the technology. Our manufacturing footprint is all in Vizac, uh, some in Hyderabad. We said, okay, let's start a manufacturing facility in Hyderabad, right? Take the technology and do it in Hyderabad. Uh, then we said, is that the right model? Again, coming to the access and how best to take this basic research from a BSBE lab all the way through the patient, right? In a commercial setting, how do you do and what's the right way? And that's when a lot of deliberations happen and we realized that the, the CGT manufacturing is both art and science. Uh, so there is science, there is technology, there are equipments, that's the science component, but it also needs skilled manpower. And it's also, that's the art component, right? You can buy equipments, you can buy technology, but you have to train manpower. You have to make them learn uh, these things. And that's why we said this model, and that's why technoparks actually play a great role, right? If technopark was not there, just imagine if we would have come, we would have set up a manufacturing facility in Hyderabad and we wouldn't have been able to train good manpower. Right, uh, so I think that's where this is the power of Technopark. It helps the ease the from take the product from the lab to commercialization. It plays a pivotal role in between of a technology transfer catalyst, so to say. Helps you take the technology from the lab to the market. So that's where Technoparks play a big role, uh, and and hence we thought we should set up. A manufacturing facility here. So apart from training manpower uh, and scaling up technology, the other thing which it does is it also improves process innovation. Because once you have the process lab here, because lab is focused here, Dr. Jayendran's lab, BSB is focused on basic research. Process we don't focus so much. But if you have process equipments, you have scale up equipments, that's the other thing which it does is helps you in improving the process research. That's the other thing which technoparks do. Uh, and I just wanted to sum up with this, that the focus of academia is very different. Uh, as Professor Ashutosh also said, the focus of academia is publish papers, award PhDs, do basic research, and problem and, and the industry focus is very different, right? Industry, we start with business case. We start with Excel sheets. We start with how much money can you make? So, and academia doesn't do all of that. Academia doesn't have an Excel sheet before they start a research project. They will say, what's novel in this, right? How can I get a paper in this? Can I get a nature paper? Can I get a science paper? How much, what's the impact factor of a journal? And uh, industry says none of that, you know, I need finished product which I can sell tomorrow. Give me Dabba, I'll go sell it to the doctors, right? So, and and that is where concepts like Technopark help. Uh, and the other thing is, we are, industry is good in scale-up. Industry is good in regulatory, navigating the regulatory landscape for approval, doing clinical trials, 
multicentric clinical trials, not just investigator initiated, but doing multicentric clinical trials. We are good at that. And there is, if you look at the entire value chain for bringing a product from discovery to commercialization, academic does the initial part. Industry does the later part. And then what you need is the middle part, which kind of is a vacuum. And that is where concepts like Technobark. And so what we have to do is academia has to take a step further and say, not just basic research. I'll try to make it transformational, right? Translational. And industry thinks they want everything ready-made. And so they will have to take a step back and say, you know, I'm not going to get everything ready made. I will have to invest uh, my resource, my time and, and, and train people. And I think if we can, academics can take a step further and industry can take a step back, uh, that's the great meeting ground. And that's what we are trying to do here uh, with the BSBE department. They had done great work in terms of gene therapy. So what these therapies are is basically for patients who are born or have a defective gene and which then manifests into different diseases, either muscle, eye. And these are generally happens to kids uh, because of the genetic deficiency. Uh, BSBE department has developed gene therapies where they can A, identify the gene which causes that disease, B, synthesize it in the lab, C, package it and, and send it back in the patient. Once, once that gene is delivered to the patient, it produces the proteins and then it enables the right function. And that's what we have done. Um, and I think that's a great way uh, to solve a lot of complex problems for this part of the subcontinent and then mainly for the global south. Not just make medicines accessible, but also affordable. Uh, those are two key, key pillars. And one last uh, parting thought uh, before I wind up. Uh, I would say for both academics and industry, this, these kind of collaborations are great, but we should not look at these collaborations for incremental innovation. I think incremental innovation is good, but we should look at these collaborations for more orbit changing uh, and really transformational work where you are trying to do something which never existed and and, and the thinking should be, how, how can I collaborate with academia? How can I collaborate with industry to bring this thing first in the world? I think that's that should be the thinking rather than thinking incremental. Can, can academics help me in small process modification here and there? I think that doesn't help the cause. What helps the cause is really, can you bring in through this partnership, right? Two great extremes of knowledge like how can you partner and bring these cutting edge things which can serve the global population? Uh, I think that's what we should be thinking. Uh, yeah, and, and that's what we are trying to do. As we said, in car -T, we were first to launch the humanized car. And with gene therapy, uh, we will do the same thing. Not just for India, but for the global south. And eventually, we will also get a USFDA inspection done here. So it will be a global product which will go out of IIT campus. So thank you for the patient listening and really, yeah, thank you.